Hey, what's going on, family? You are tuned in to Real Last Real Radio 104.1. We're your nightcap of comedy. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, this is a brand new show, brand new week. I am joined in virtual studio with my homeboy, Miguel Colon Jr. What's up, brother? What up, Ken? Yo, man. James is out hanging out with his wife for a birthday weekend and Mother's Day. And Mike is hanging out with his parents um, somewhere eating lasagna because they miss Easter. I don't know who the hell eats lasagna on Easter, but none of that sounds right. That sounds like code words like <laughs> missed Easter eating lasagna. Be like, he's not in the room alone. He's not in the room alone. Yeah, we you know? need to go save Mike. We yeah. have to go save Mike. But we do have a special guest on the line with us today. He will be at Brick and Spoon May 10th through the 12th in Maitland, Florida. If you want tickets, you can go to the comedy takeover.com. We have Mr. Damon Williams in the house. Damon, what's up, brother? What is really going on, fellas? What's happening? What's happening? And what's happening? Hey, man. Thank you for tuning in, man. We, um, Joe Neal, a good friend of ours, um, has a show it called Brick and Spoon. And if you country, Brick and Spoon with an M at the end. <laughs> um, and Damon will be there May 10th through the 12th. Damon, we start every interview off the same way. Um, we are comedians, but at the same time, we are comic book guys on this show. And we love the origin story. So we need to know how long you've been doing comedy, where did you start, and how was your first ever show? Uh, I started in Chicago. Uh, the first show that I had planned was at a place called All Jokes Aside. It was a Wednesday night open mic. And the person who handed me the mic and got me started that particular night was Adele Gibbons. Whoa, she, nice. She was the MC. She had already done Def Jam, so it was a hot spot to be doing stand-up uh, on her, her uh, like open mic night. But my cousin, George Wilborn, uh, who I met doing stand-up the night before, which was not really stand-up. I just went to some little spot and tried to tell a few jokes before I went to an actual comedy club. But I knew I had a cousin in the world that was a comedian, and he just happened to be there. So he walked me over to All Jokes the next day and got me on the list. Um, <clears throat> it was great, actually. The first the first set I had, because I had basically, um, you know, went back home that night and practiced overnight. You know, the, the typical thing comics you hear about yeah. when they stand in the mirror and try their little five minutes got out. A, got a hairbrush oh. in your hand. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I don't know why we all stand in the mirror and we don't pay attention to anything we're doing in the mirror. We're just like looking in the mirror. I was I was holding a, a, a shaving cream can. That's why I used to use like a thin <laughs> one. And I wouldn't look at myself in the mirror, but I would stand in the mirror. Yeah, so I did that stuff, man. And, um, and then it, it went pretty decent. In fact, I remember in the middle of my set, I was like, wow, y'all y'all MFs is laughing, huh? <laughs> and so, that, it, it, it amazed me, right? So then um, that was 29 years ago, November. Wow. 19, 30 years in November that that happened. It was November 92. Uh, <clears throat> but I never stopped after that. I, I had caught the book, and I, I continued to do so. And maybe six months later, Sinbad and his brother had a show called uh, Comic Justice, hosted by A.J. Jamal. They came to that same show. But, and by then, I was the host of the Wednesday night show, or at least contributing to the host of it. And they allowed me to do that show, not knowing I'd only been doing stand-up six months. I was on Comedy Central six months later. <clears throat> wow. Nice. Now, I was reading your bio, so talk to us. So you own the subway, or you worked at Subway? <laughs> <laughs> like a kid... <laughs> Who would put work at Subway in the damn bio? <laughs> hey, hey, bro, some comedians be like, hey, ass seen at Subway. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually did own a Subway sandwich shop um, from the, not 90 to 92, and I sold it, and that's when I ended up trying stand-up because I had time on my hands. And, yes, I was. Uh, it was, was pre-Jared, so the, the, the franchise had not taken off yet. Post-Jared was hard. They're like, listen. You guys are going to hear some things. <laughs> like, we're no, taking away the kids' eat for free plan. Yeah, back then, uh, Jared was not the spokesperson. He was just a <laughs> fat ass pedophile. Uh, <laughs> but, but once he once uh, he became a spokesperson, that franchise took off. But I had already sold mine, so that's when Subway really went national. So were you was, one, like were you one of the four? black men that ever went to subway because subway was like in the early 90s man it wasn't what it is now where people know like i used to see subway and like what the hell is this like i would pass by it because i used to go to like delis and, and local stuff like that so like when you bought your subway like what, what what area was your subway in it was downtown chicago actually and the reason why i did it i, I read an article in black enterprise magazine about the top franchises for blacks the top 40 franchises for blacks and it had the lowest startup cost and um, the lowest franchise fee 
So that's how I jumped in. And, uh, you know, I, I was in a food court, so I didn't have to build out an okay. entire store. Yeah. So I had a small space, which was more economical. And, you know, I was trying to launder that money. So I got on in. <laughs> Ken, what was Ken? What was the Asian lady at the Chinese restaurant in the food court thinking about uh, Mr. Williams when he was opening up his subway? Give it to me, oh, Ken. Oh, but like a man. Look at him. Like a sandwich. Oh, <laughs> oh he got put on. He got put on. Hey, man, if you listen, we got Damon Williams online. He will be at Brick and Spoon May 10th through the 12th, 8 p.m. The ComedyTakeover.com for your tickets. Um, So it, it's crazy. I've I've listened to you. My, I've been doing comedy 15 years. I've listened to you for 15 years of that. You 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 were on radio. You were on the Tom Joyner show. Um, How has it been since since leaving Tom Joyner? And how did you even get on Tom Joyner? Man, well, how it's been since leaving Tom Joyner is I have less money. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's how that's been but no it was great man I got on Tom's show because Tom started his career in Chicago between Chicago and Dallas he was fly jocking back and forth doing the same fly jock yeah. Tom Jones. Yeah, he was flying between two, two cities so he was a Chicago fixture then he started doing sky shows and uh, I would always go to the sky show and he'd see me you know, hovering around I knew people on the show and eventually I got on the sky show then I got on the cruise my former, uh, my, my final goal was to get on the show, so I, I started calling in a report called "Seriously Ignorant News" about seriously Stupid ignorant, yeah, seriously, yeah. seriously, yeah. And then uh, J. Anthony Brown would start missing so many days, they had me sit in for Jay. I became known as the comedian behind the glass. So you know, when you have a problem, break glass. Damn, is ready. So, <laughs> and Jay said, "Yeah, you're just sitting around waiting to take my damn job." Uh, <laughs> but me and Jay Anthony are, are really the best of friends. But he started missing all them days, and I, at the point, you know, they was paying me, man. I, 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 I hate to say, but you know, it was like fifteen hundred thousand dollars a day whenever Jay missed. At one point, I was thinking about having him hit. Um, <laughs> Every morning he wakes up, his car tires flat again. Yeah, I thought put a nasty Kerrigan on his ass, you know. <laughs> <laughs> hey. So, also being a, a you a former business owner at the subway, a stand up comic, but I don't know, do a, a lot of people may not know this or listen to our show. You actually own a comedy club as well, correct? I don't own it. I'm, I'm partnering with the owner. I do all the promotions and booking, and I hate to say food court. Nah, uh, <laughs> it's, it's in a strip mall. Hell uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, it's, it's Riddles Comedy Club in Alston, right outside Chicago. Uh, Riddles is a, tr a traditional comedy club. It's been around for over 30 years, but I, I kind of jumped in. I didn't want to do it, man, because just like right now when you say you own or run a comedy club, now my inbox going to be filled with a bunch of dudes who are not comedians. Who think Damon, I'm texting you right now. Booked. I'm like, hey, man, just heard yeah. you on Real Laughs. Yeah, How you get booked? booked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah, it's, it's a dope situation, man. We had George Wallace there this weekend and Myra J, who was from the time, joined the morning show. Yeah, Myra J, yeah. Uh, and Kelly Kill. So they came. George came just because he wanted to work out because Myra was there. And it was all based on our relationship from Tom joining. So shout out to Tom joining the whole crew from that situation. And I'm on with Sybil still every Tuesday on her podcast. It's Sybil. Okay, that's great. That's nice, I've, man. I've, got, I've got a question, David. You've been in the game for, you know, close to three decades, you know. Um, what do you what have you seen in the comedy game that, that changed that you think is really positive? And what have you seen in the comedy game that's changed that you feel is kind of negative? Negative is people been running their ass up on stage. Stay in your yeah. seat, people. Yeah. If, if you got if you're offended by a joke or something happened in the room, chances are it ain't had nothing to do with you. Most of these jokes we wrote before we got there, so it ain't got nothing to do with you. And if you don't like it, just don't listen or go home. But if yeah. we're not we're not we're not up there to be uh attacked and, and you know assaulted. But I tell you the good and the bad. The good is uh traditional comics like myself uh are still around, you know, showing the way to the younger comics. Uh, the bad is some of the audiences think that comedy is what they see on Instagram and, and what, you know, they don't want it. They don't want to sit through the structure of real stand up and no disrespect to this era of comedy. They are doing what they do. But while it out, it's not stand up. No disrespect to those cats. Uh, you know, 85 South, when they do their podcast, that's a live podcast. That's not a stand up comedy show. So if you come there and you want to just do straight stand up jokes, that audience has not been you know honed to yeah. listen to what we do. So there was a young brother had an issue with that show in LA just recently uh, where the, the audience was just rowdy because they want to hear you riffing and, and, and roasting each other. And that's not comedy. But I, I do not knock anybody that we call so-called internet comedians because they're working with the era that they came up in. It's just like when we had Comic View and Def Jam, they have the Instagram and, 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 and social media. So, you know, I'm, I'm glad that it's keeping people in seats. These guys are keeping some of these comedy clubs open. So like at Riddles, I'll may, I may book three traditional comics uh, for three weekends, and then I'll grab one of the internet-type guys that'll sell the tickets, and they'll sell that thing out because they got loyal Sell fans. it out. 
Yeah. yeah, yes, they will, man. They will. I laugh at you saying about the whole inbox thing. This is a true story. Two years ago, I won a competition called the Steve Harvey Stand Up Spotlight Comedy Competition. You sent me a message asking me to send you a veils for riddles, and I replied back, Is this really you? And you was like, Yeah. So I didn't know if it was really you or not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I do that, but you know, but I, I communicate with so many people, so you do have to be diligent to follow back up so I can get back on because it's, it's so it's, it's very difficult. I, I if bet you're, if you're a comic to book a comedy club because you got friends, you got people that you uh do and don't associate with. You uh, got your but, own schedule you got to yeah. deal with. It's a yeah. lot of trust booking, too. I mean, because if you look at it like, uh, like anybody sends you a tape, they're sending you usually the hottest they've ever recorded at the best club they've ever rocked, you know? And 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 and, and I, that must be hard sometimes wondering like, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm going to put this dude on feature. I saw eight minutes of his at the best show he ever did in his life, not necessarily who he always is. Well, luckily for us, there are so many talented comedians in Chicago. So if somebody came and they bomb out once or twice, they either going to get cut or they're going to do five. They're going to do that same eight I saw. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're going to sit there down so well. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys if you listen we got damon williams he would be a brick and spoon the comedy takeover may 10th through the 12th 8 p.m that is tuesday wednesday and thursday man you have an impressive bio i have been following you for years um uh, when, when i started comedy with some guys man we would listen to your jokes man we love you brother uh, thank you so much for for coming on man we we truly appreciate it man you got time you want to um drop your social media where everybody can follow you at and, and talk about what you got coming up yeah man first of all thanks for having me man and, and i wish i could have got a few more you know quips in because if y'all don't know don't let this radio interview uh determine if you come to the show or not i'm gonna tell your face off when you come to the comedy club <laughs> nice. i literally like to leave people in pain your face hurting your rib cage tight you can skip the gym when you come to the brick and spoon you can eat all you want get an extra portion because you're gonna work it off uh i'm easy to find damonwilliamscomedy.com that's my website and that of course uh has all my social links but damon williams comedy on instagram i'm on there all day every day you know we got days off that's what i do i'm, I'm on there you know promoting uh, checking other people out and doing things of that nature. But I'm coming to town, man, to Brick and Spoon. My man, Joe Neal, he's a longtime friend of mine. We do great. Plus, I came for his uh, shows at the movie theater. And yeah, that everybody was good. see it. So y'all can come and see it because <laughs> yeah, we had an abandoned movie theater where it looked like a horror film should have been. <laughs> yeah, 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 uh, yeah. <laughs> but it was dope, but y'all missed it. So he brought me back. And, uh, you know, I, I'm bringing my wife, so we're going to be hanging out, having a good time, drinking, and, and just kicking it in that uh, Orlando market area. So let's do it, people. Your boy from Tom Joy, the morning show, and other places in town. And don't ask me why I'm not wearing a suit, because I'm not wearing a suit. <laughs> <laughs> that is, hey, Dave, you smoke cigars? No, nah, I don't smoke cigars, man. I'm for, you know, I kind of have a thing about cigars because I don't like the way they shake and I don't like sucking on nothing that size. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, they be around there puffing. Mom, 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 mom. No, I'm good on, on the cigar. Man. Okay, well, I was going to bring you a cigar, but since you did, since you see it that way, I'm not going to bring you one. I'm bringing you a taco. <laughs> Hey, bring him a taco, right? Yeah. <laughs> We're bringing him a Subway sub. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget, May 10th through the 12th, 8 p.m. Um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Brick and Spoon. You can get your tickets at thecomedytakeover.com. Damon Williams will be in Orlando, Florida, Maitland, Florida, but it's Orlando. Yeah, Please right. come check him out. Uh, Damon, thanks again, man. We know we got to let you go. We know you got a show tonight, so break a leg, brother. Uh, hey, we love you, man. And I'll see you this week. I'll be doing guest spots, so I'll see you next week, brother. Absolutely. Y'all come get down, man. I want to see you. Thanks. All right. Take it easy, man. Appreciate you. Hey, man, this is Real Laugh. We'll be right back, man. We about to go to commercial. Got to pay some bills. Holla. We're back. Real Laughs. We're ready at 104.1. We're your nightcap of comedy. And we thank you guys so much for tuning in. We will have brand new shows all week, so please continue to tune in. And if you miss these shows, please go to iHeartRadio, search Real Laughs, and download the podcast. Or you can go to YouTube and see these beautiful ass faces. And, and listen to us and look at the back, my background. <laughs> look at the background. I got Miguel Colon Jr. in the building, and, and Damon's decided to, to stay and, and kick it with us. So Damon is back in the building with us. Dave, are you a sports guy? Yeah, you know, basketball, football are my two favorites. I'm not much of a baseball person because I don't like watching a, a sport that's so slow that they got a built-in yawn. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they got a seventh in the stretch. All right, everybody get up. Ah! That, yo, 
I never yeah. thought of it that way. You're right. That is. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you know you have a, a slow game. And baseball needs a clock. Yeah, baseball they, announcers got a hard job because they always try to make it sound really interesting, you know? They're like, Rodriguez comes up to bat. Marquez goes for the pitch. It's a strike. And they got to get, because it's so boring, they got to throw all types of wild facts on the like, little known fact. Marquez is from uh, San Tropez. <laughs> if you don't know about San Tropez, the island, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> it's like, this right. got nothing to do with what's going on right now. Oh, yeah, that's why they can go deep into the stats and everything. You know, mm -hmm. you know, his first time at bat was at uh, Schuster Park with his dad. His dad was really impressed at the fact that he could swing <laughs> and hit the ball. You know, my wife had an affair with a man who looks very similar to Rodriguez. Uh, it wasn't him because I shot him, but uh, it was overturned by the court for a little bit of temporary hidden sanity. Oh, and it's a pop fly caught by Winston. You know? <laughs> exactly. Man, we were this is what we were going to talk about this segment, uh, and Dave, you can a, a key it because I, I had this whole thing I want to talk about. Then my wife tried to talk me out of it. So I don't know if you um, know, uh, I think it's, his name is Tory Lanez. Um, yeah. the guy that shot Meg the Stallion. Yeah, he shot right. in the foot. I'm gonna shoot you in your big toe. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> apparently last week he got arrested in Vegas for like having weed on him. Which for me, how do you get arrested in Vegas for having weed on you? That, that's the thing, Damon. This is my thing. I feel like if you're a celebrity, you shouldn't have to travel with drugs. Like you should go Vegas to a city legal. and somebody should have drugs for you. And, and weed's legal in Vegas. How much weed did he have? They had to do something about it. <laughs> well, if, was it an airport or in, on, in general population? He was airport. Oh, well, that's what it is. You, you, you know, it's not. It's federal still. You know, it's legal, yeah, yeah. You know, and and they see they got that loud, loud. You know, you definitely gonna get caught. Yeah. Gonna see the, and it depends on your TSA person. One of them might catch you. You know, you could just slide them three buds and then and keep it moving. But <laughs> yeah, that was obviously a a black woman TSA agent who's a Meg the Stallion fan. Yep. Said, no, your ass ain't got to go through here with no weed. You about to sit down, little Tory. <laughs> get it, well, get I was telling my wife this is. though, Miguel. This is the thing I'll yeah. tell my wife. I'm like, if you're a celebrity, when you go to a city, people should be coming to you like, hey, yo, I got that weed. But then my wife was like, nah, but what if you can't trust? I said, but you can't trust people. But said, yeah, but who he get this? He he should be getting the weed from whatever needs celebrity to be, well, in that city. There needs to be an agency. There needs to be a law firm in L.A. that can recommend you to anyone, anywhere you go. You're like, yo, I'm going. I got to do this show in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Well, I'm glad you stopped by Weinstein, Kringle, and Marquez. Uh, <laughs> you're going to call this dude Rodrigo up when you land. He's going to take care of everything. He's got a blue check mark next to his name and everything like that. Yeah, he verified. Well, the why yeah, he's verified. Why they, yeah, the reason why they stopped him, because you know he's a real little bitty dude. They thought they thought he was a kid traveling by himself, and he was <laughs> Like, why does this kid have all this weed on him? You know, the so. TSA agent was holding him in the arms, just <laughs> <laughs> rocking him, baby. Shh, baby, we hey, gonna find hey, your mama. Hey. He right. got a he got a little backpack with weed all in it. Like, man, we, you got the Dora backpack. Let me give me yeah. this. Backpack. He's uh, in the police uh, with, police room with the pilot's wings on. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah backpack with weed and a and a car seat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but when when comedians come to Chicago, like, what what's the hangout spot? For like when you know, because you the club owner, if, if you're in town that week and you're not on the road, what's what's like something most comedians want to do when they come to Chicago? Uh, you want to hit all the other comedy rooms, man. Not the not the main comedy club, but the rooms. Francis Cocktail Lounge is, is owned by a comedian Marlon Mitchell. His his mother owned it for forty years. They actually do comedy there on Tuesdays, but. You know, we kick it in there. We sit and drink and, you know, laugh and joke and talk. Um, it's, a, it's a bunch of little other spots because, you know, I don't I don't go out like that, you know, because when, you, when you're when you in this business, people, and I'm telling you this, some advice, this ain't even funny. You don't want to be seen out a lot because so, then people won't pay to see you out. So oh, that makes sense, man. So Damn, when I'm at home, that's the good one. When, yeah, when I'm at home, I'm, I'm 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 real low. So when I show up, they be like, "Ah, oh, Davis here," you know. So <laughs> if you're at every spot, they be like, "I just saw that fool over here. And I saw him over there." Then I just saw him at the grocery store, so I try to lay low because I, I treat my home market as a as a traveling market as well. So that okay. I'm only on on the mic every once in a while and being seen in appearances. So keep that in mind, fellas. Okay, we'll do. Hey, man, he's back. He's at Brick and Spoon, May 10th through 12th. Worst show ever, bro. Come on, I got. I know you got a funny worst show ever story. Uh, we all got a ever? funny worst show ever story. Well, yeah, I would do a chicken wing or something at you. <laughs> well, hell, just this Friday at uh, Tommy oh. Jesus Pleasanton, you know, everybody crazy right now. I'm telling you, it's the vaccine. These zombies about to come out. Um, <laughs> 
this lady, for no apparent reason, was just getting angry because I was doing a joke about Chicago. It wasn't the worst show ever because I tore her ass up. And let me tell you, people, say something to me if you want. If you want to get embarrassed and have yourself uh, in, a, in a viral situation as historically roasted, heckle me if you like. But she was she was so ugly <laughs> <laughs> that it was easy. I kind of took it easy on her. I told the people, leave her alone, you no know, security, everything. Let her leave, let her live because you know she's been living with that face her whole life. So I <laughs> Why she's so bitter? And she had a raspy voice. So yeah. I, thought, I thought of Mavis Staples singing, "I take you there." I know her pain. I like. Boom, but boom, one of the worst boom, shows boom. that I did have um, initially was the House of Blues a long time ago. I opened for Aretha Franklin, and it was I was thinking it was gonna be like ladies like my mother, you know, black women, and I knew exactly what to say to them. I was a very new comic. And I went up there and there was a whole bunch of uh, medical professionals from the Middle East. It was like a, it was a, they bought it out, like a convention. So private, they, yeah. yeah, so they didn't know what the hell I was talking about. So at first I was trying to do all this current, you know, my mother went with this particular song on, you know, if he getting along, daddy didn't come home. She playing one read the song. If he did, it's a nice song. And they were like, what the hell is he talking about? So I just started, <laughs> I just started talking about my family. And when I did the thing about, you know, being a parent and being a husband, then they, they it was general and they caught on. But the first five minutes I was up there sweating and struggling and throat got dry. You got that trickle of sweat. The first trickle go down your arm. That's yeah. Yeah. Bad. Then when you're doing terrible, that trick will go down the crack of your ass. And that's, the one, <laughs> that's the one you don't want to experience. Yeah, that's when you're yeah. having a bad set. Yeah, you keep yeah. doing all these medical professionals from the Middle East. You're like, you ever been to a barbecue and, and, and the pork is dry? And they're like, never. <laughs> never. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you had a, you had a, uh, 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 when you're on Tom Jones, you used to do the Seriously. How did you come up with Seriously? Was that something he wanted or you came? Because I'm a good friend with Guy Tory. And mm -hmm. God was like, man, Tom wants you to have this, this day and that. You got to be on point. Like, how right. did you come up with Seriously? Or and is it a date? Was it a daily thing? You wrote it the night before, months before? How did you come up with it? Well, it was. It started with, uh, I wanted to do obscure stories. I didn't want to uh, specifically do criminals. But Tom's son, uh, who was the you know president of the company, said, well, why don't you just do stupid criminals? You know, and I was like, ah, that's such a niche that you got to find those stories. But thank God for me, it was... um. Uh, um, the, a, a, a website called clumsycrooks.com clumsy crooks <laughs> and they would they would just highlight all the stories you know all of them was from Florida right yeah yeah um, yeah, yeah, yeah Florida yeah. man come on it was yeah. always something in Florida I could always count on Florida uh, but 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 the crazy about it, when I first started doing the first initial reports I would do it as a newscaster voice and I'd be like today a man in in Florida got his penis stuck in an alligator's mouth blah 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 so it was doing all right, and Tom loved it, but the, the, the affiliates weren't catching on, so they let me do it in my own natural style. So I used to have this real prepared way where I would write it out and yeah. recite it and read it. But then I just started looking at the headlines and riffing on it. And then with them, with Anthony Brown being in the studio and Tom laughing and Sybil being such a quick person, it just evolved to being just a thing, man. And so, but the hard part was I had to have these as serious as. So I'd be like, as serious as a half price lap dance. From a midget, uh, yeah. or you know, I have to come up with something yeah. as serious as you know. Uh, but that what's your what's your favorite as serious as? What's your favorite one uh, you've ever said? I feel so crazy that I can't even remember them shits, them things, man. Cause I gotta, <laughs> I gotta, I gotta look back on them. Uh, uh, that was one. I, that's what I said it was a half price lap dance from a one leg stripper. Um, <laughs> as serious man, as a was, glory was, hole on a screen door. door. Like, like it was the topical, like something that just happened this week, and I, I would use something that happened in current events, and I'd add that as a seriously. So, but they had, I had a bunch of randos, man. I wish I was prepared for that question, because there are some great ones. And, and Jay Anthony told me I need to write it, have them in like a book so that I could look yeah. back on them. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. You, can if, find if you, them. You, you can still find seriously in the news on YouTube. It's a whole page of them. just look have up. You, you ever thought about doing that? Put them in book format. That's actually a good idea because I it was one of I would listen to it. I I didn't have a day job, so when I used to drive to my day job, you would happen to be the segment that was on as I'm time. driving to yeah. the job. So I would always laugh. That's why I was curious what would be your favorite one. That's why I'm thinking that yeah, he's right. If you put that in book format, that's actually that's pretty good. I yeah, think that'd I be pretty that. dope. I may do that or tweet them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or tweet yeah. them. Yeah, that'd be another one uh, too. So I was looking at the, a bio as well. You you got the host, the Kings? Yeah, I was the uh, the opening, the, the pre-host basically. Oh. So, so you no, know, the original Kings was, uh, Guy Tory was the host. Yeah. And they had Sid, Bernie, and DL. I mean, no, it was Sid, Bernie, and Steve. 
Steve was headlining and, and it was not going, you know, according to plan. And by being Steve being the biggest name at the time, he was didn't want to relinquish that spot. But it was kind of off because, you know, Bernie Mac ain't nothing to play with. Ain't nothing to play follow. with, dude. Yeah. So they revamped it and they brought Steve back as host and they added D.L. Hughley and then it would be D.L. Bernie said. Uh, but Steve being Steve don't want to come out first and don't want to come out to a dry house. So they were trying to book a, com a local comedian in every market to do the shows, but they weren't finding consistency after the first two or three shows. They was like, no, nah, we can't just be hopeful to show up town yeah. and have a comic. So they decided to, to split the tour between me and Mike Britt, who goes by Mike B out of New York. Well, Mike did something where he kind of fell out with the promoter and they ended up giving me the whole tour and I did 30 dates. So I would come Ooh. out and do seven to 10 minutes in front of that arena and if Steve Harvey had a thing, depending on the market or the city, if the crowd wasn't out there, they had a countdown clock that I was supposed to stick to. He said, if you don't see me standing there, that means I'm not ready to go out there. So just keep going. So in certain cities like New York, Atlanta, L.A., you know, he wanted to be hype. I'm doing 20 up top, you know. And That's then cool. I would come back after intermission and do another seven and bring him back out. So it was a, it was a cool gig, but it wasn't even just a gig. It was hanging out with them cats, man, having the type of exposure. Even even Bernie Mac, who I knew very well from Chicago, but I'd never been on the road with him and kicked it and rode limos and the after parties. And he didn't go to parties. He had uh, suites. He would have people come into the suite. He would never go to clubs, never do none of that stuff. But, but to have that type of direct access to Bernie Mac, uh, who was one of my big homies and my mentor, uh, was amazing to do that to, that tour, man. Well, it's nice. Hey, we got two minutes. Are you sticking around? Or you got to go. I can do the two. Okay. All right. We got two minutes. Okay. I got to ask you, what's your Mount Rushmore? I ain't answering that. <laughs> I'll tell you this one. Then. I'll give you this one that we've always watched. Is there a comic that you never got to work with that you would have loved to work with? Uh, old, new, this, that. Is there no, somebody can, that I, I, can, I can use a list because you know these, these lists, but it's hard to narrow down to four or five. I always, I always answer this question like this: Richard Pryor was the greatest. Eddie Murphy is the most talented. Um, and then there's you know our contemporary comics like Chappelle and Rock. I, I enjoy their work. I love Wanda Sykes. I like I Wanda Sykes. Bill Burr. Uh, then it's all the cast that I've come up with, you know what I mean? So I, once I get into that, it's a whole list of people that I would love to mention, but, I, you know, it go crazy. I know Chicago has a, a hell of a squad, and that's killing it out here right now, like D-Ray and uh, Deion Cole, Lil Rail, Hannibal Burris, uh, you know, who defamed Bill Cosby. I should put <laughs> Bill Cosby on that list as well. Uh, it's one of the greatest of all time. And then there's those white comics like Rodney Dangerfield and, and – uh, what's the what's my man name? Hey, I can't think of it. Milton oh, Burrow? Don Rickles. Don Don Rickles. Rickles. He just roast the hell out of people. So, you know, I love comedy. I was a student at the game coming up. Joan Rivers don't get as much respect as she should yeah. as a woman in the, in the craft and how hard she went for how many years she did it. So, you know, I love it. I love the game, man. And it's a bunch of up and coming rides and people. My girl, Just Niece, is killing around the country. Oh, Just is uh, funny. Yeah. Uh, Corey Bell is another Chicago lady that's doing it. Uh, I just worked with my man, uh, Kevin Damn Fool Simpson. He's over here with me this week. Damn Fool, funny, yeah. Leon, but then in Chicago, we got we got legends like Tony Schofield, Kenny Howe, Leon Rogers, JD, uh, Muhammad, Marlon Mitchell. Uh, so I would be all day listing comics, man. Then there's people around the country that I work and enjoy, like Marvin Dixon, who has you know put a lot of money in comics. Oh, Florida, baby, yeah, yeah, you know. And then the Young Guns, DC Young Fly, I got a lot of respect for his uh, his uh, uh he has respect for the game. You know, and he's killing it. He's doing his thing. And, you know, Carlos is also funny. Chico Carlos is funny. Funny. Carlos, I call Carlos my comedy cousin because we got the same yeah. last name. <laughs> Check it out. So it's so many, man. You know, I, I, I would be remiss because I know I'm going to miss about 30 people that I'm thinking yeah, of. Yeah, yeah. And I can understand that. Hey, that's David my Williams, man. He popped back in May 10th through the 12th, 8 p.m. each night. Brick and Spoon, the comedy takeover.com. Get them tickets. He told you, don't take your ass to the gym. He gonna work them abs out. Hey, thank you again. Uh, if you go, if you pop back up, you just pop back up. But hey, thank you again. Hey, we gotta take a commercial break. We'll be right back. Real Labs Real Radio 104.1. We are back. Real Labs Ready Real Radio 104.1. We are your nightcap of comedy. And remember, guys, if you want to follow us, please go, please go to IG, um, look up Real Labs, go to Facebook, look up Real Labs, Twitter Real Labs. Um, YouTube Real Labs, and if you want to um, listen to any other shows you miss, you can go to iHeartRadio, search Real Labs, and download our podcast. And remember, hit us up in the inbox. Tell us you love the show. 
it's crazy, man. I'm joined in virtual studio. It's me and just Miguel. Damon had to drop off. He had a show. Appreciate him for sticking around for two segments. Um, Mike is out tonight. Um, Mike is in South Florida with his family eating lasagna. Uh, it's like an Easter thing, and they miss Easter. Um, James is hanging out with his wife. Cause you love Michelle. It's Mother's Day. Good. James got the gimp suit on. <laughs> you know, they got the they got, James got the gimp suit. <laughs> Michelle writes the safety word on a piece of paper and then rips Whoa. it in half. <laughs> hey, safety word is lasagna. Yeah. <laughs> bro, lasagna. Man, lasagna. Hey, hey, lasagna. Hey, I, we, we talk about, bro, I'm going to tell you, I, I, if anybody's around and know me, I love and adore my wife. But James, James beats everybody. Yeah. James just, I mean, like, <laughs> well, you know when a husband say, I take a bullet for my woman. James would shoot himself for Michelle. When, when, when James <laughs> saw Will Smith uh, slap Chris Rock, he just looked over at Michelle and he was like, was that the right thing to do? And she said, you yeah. know, and he goes, I can't believe he did it. <laughs> if she would have nodded yes, he would have yeah. been like, kill hey, Chris Rock right now. Hey, hey if, if that was James, James probably would have shot Chris Rock. Hey, yeah. hey no, you're not about to talk about my wife, Alopecia. Yeah, you James would have walked right up to him and said, I'm a huge fan. Bam. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Hey, and then closed his eyes. I'm yeah, so close. I'm so sorry, bro. Nobody touches body. <laughs> he was great. No one touches body. But well, James is out this weekend. It's his birthday and Mother's Day. And James never takes his birthday off. So we we let we let brother have his birthday off. And Mike he used to hangs out with his family and and Mike wanted to go visit his family in South Florida. So like, what you guys don't know is we'll text each other like, hey, something came up. I can't be on this show. And that's me, Ken, and Mike. But James will be like, I'm so sorry, guys. I have a birthday coming up. I apologize. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, we'll text each other like, hey, man, I'm going to hang out with some of my homies tonight, man. I can't make it to the show. <laughs> We're like, James, it's your birthday. Like, yeah, uh, he's apologized. You- hey, guys, let's. Hey, hey, my son's graduating from college. I'm so sorry. I can't do that's it. <laughs> We're like, hey, hey, guys, look, I'm I'm hungover. Yeah. I can't even make I can't I've been make trying to make it show. to this pie restaurant on Monday and they close at nine. So I'm gonna skip yeah, this yeah. show so hey, I can do that. Hey, hey, look, man, I want to go to bed early. Mm-hmm. I'm not even going. James, James <laughs> has a James is the one person on this show that has like very important stuff. Yeah. And apologizes for hey, hey guys, look. I get the vasectomy tonight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like James, who cares? Yo, hey that's guys, important. I'm, I'm super sorry about this. Um, I I, I died. I died. Uh, I'm damn sorry, it. y'all. I'm dead. And I could have. I know I, I could have died on Wednesday, but I died. I died. Yeah, I wanted to make the show, man. But so I, let me see if I can get somebody to cover for me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and me and Ken are like can't make it. And it's like yeah, about to be the show. <laughs> we don't even tell you why we can't make it. We just <laughs> don't. We just hey, I can't make it. We don't give uh-huh. you excuse or nothing. Hey, we can't. We just hey, we just can't make it. I didn't realize there was two more episodes of Ozark, guys. <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to do the show. <laughs> I've been watching Winning Time with the Lakers, um, <laughs> and it comes on tonight. It's like you, you know you can watch that show anytime. Yeah, but I like to watch it at eight. When well, it like, that's my vibe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you was missing the last segment, I want to keep this. Going, uh, what's yeah. his name? T- Tony Tory Lanes, Tory, that, Tory Lanes, the shot. That, this thing, I don't even care about that part because I probably would have shot her too. But look, <laughs> when you shoot somebody in the foot, this is my thing. When you shoot somebody in the foot back in my day, that meant you weren't trying to really hurt them, you yeah, just needed yeah. to get your point across. Yeah, yeah, come on. If you ain't seen coming, what is it? A new um, the night. whole night. Oh, come on, bro. Like, this is cl- it's the most classic scene in Harlem Night. If you shoot somebody in the foot, it's, that's love. Yeah, that's, man, I didn't want to have to shoot love. you. If I love you, bro, I, I foot or kneecap. Yeah, if you're shot, and, and not even kneecap, man, that could, that could ruin your game for a while. Shot in the foot, this is what happens. You get in a huge argument, you beefing hard, it goes down, you shoot him in the foot. Six weeks later, they're at your house. You're giving them the ottoman because you know their yeah, foot yeah, shot. Yeah, yeah, you you're, you're, the you're like, <laughs> yeah, I'll go downstairs and get the Chinese when it comes. I, I don't want you to move, dog. Yeah. Hey, sorry about that. He's like, hey, man, these things. It gets heated, man. Just once again, yeah, if I, if LeBron I Jordan argument got, got out of got out of hand. <laughs> Hey, the got Rushmore got out of hand. Yeah. You, hey, I shot Miguel in the foot, but he'll be back on real laughs. Yeah. <laughs> and then James would be like, I'm so sorry, guys. I have to take off. I'm in jail right now. I shot somebody in the foot. I know. I'm sorry. I'm going to use my one phone call to call you guys. I think I can get a segment in. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just saying, if if you if somebody shoots you in the foot, that's love. That's There's that ain't things that aren't as big as everybody makes it. Like, you get shot in the foot. 
okay, this person, they didn't agree with you, but they weren't trying to kill you, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's love, man. If like, you hit somebody watch, with your, yeah. don't watch Harlem Nights, man. That's love. If you hit somebody with your car going like five or ten miles an hour, you're just nudging them. You're like, hey, stop riding your bicycle on my <laughs> damn sidewalk. You're not trying to hurt them. You're just getting yeah. the point across. So here's the story. So apparently he got he got called. We were trying to talk about the last segment, but we wanted to get, get let Damon get all all his jokes out. He got caught in, in at, at the at the airport in Vegas with weed, and and I was telling my wife I wanted to really talk about this story tonight because I'm just like, yo, you you famous, like like you you well, you 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 famous. You get to a city. It, uh, there's uh, weed in Vegas. It's weed. That's what I'm saying. Somebody in that city, but my wife thing is, well, you don't want to get it from the wrong person because you don't want to be late. It's Vegas. You saying, go to the the store. You just go to the weed store in Vegas. And that's my thing. If, but also, you should know somebody famous in Vegas. And it's Vegas. You could get anything in Vegas. You go to a bellhop. You're like, hey, I need a hooker and some weed. He's like, cool. The hooker. Alive or what? <laughs> Alive. Okay. A little less traditional, but I like it. You know? Hey, yeah, I tell my wife, look, man, I, I, Chris Rock has this joke in the book, and he did it in his movie Top Five, where you go to the city and there's somebody always the M M F and man in that city. That yeah, you whatever you want. Hey, when comedians come to Orlando, I'm the M F and man. I got everything. I got weed. I got powder. I got heroin, mu uh, mushrooms. You into ladies? Cigars. You into boys? You into lady boys? You let us Bro, check what in. You, what you need? Real That's last got you. Hey, that's what Mike Music calls. He calls checking in. He's like, when you go to a city, you gotta check in with with who can get what in the city and say what's up Bro, to people. What you need? You need high speed internet. Real yeah. ass got you, son. What oh, you not need? all of us. Our mind's about to shut down right now. <laughs> what you Just, need, bro? You need an oil change. Real ass got you. We got you need lasagna. Your car or a gip suit because real ass <laughs> got, got you. Hey, babe, hey, let me hey, look here. You need custom t shirts. Preppy socialite got you. We got what you need. If you're a celebrity, you go to a city. That city got what you need. Stop yeah. coming in the airport with with illegal stuff. Bring you, weed. You in here got you got illegal goldfish in your bag. We got goldfish in Orlando. Hey, technically, isn't it illegal when he leaves Las Vegas? Like when he's still in Vegas, they're like, "Hey, man, you can't have weed." He's like, "I'm still in Vegas." <laughs> Just, you know, what I saying? think he was flying in. I don't think he had left yet. I oh mean, man, yeah. which mean he left the crib with the weed. He had yeah. the weed so that means whoever did TSA, wherever he left, was like, Man, you you lands, B, you good. Yeah, and when he landed, that lady was like, Yep, that's the dude that shot Meg. We checking all his bags. Yeah, he walked in, <laughs> and they were all sitting there bumping Megan the style Italian music and just looked over at him. He was like, Oh, damn. We checking all these bags, all these bags, all these bags get checked, bro. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying, am I right though? If you're a celebrity, yeah. you come to a city, there should be another celebrity in that city to take care of you. You shouldn't have to come. It's like Britney Griner. Like she's yeah. in jail in Russia for trying to leave Russia with, with hash, liquid hash. Like we got that here. And yeah. our weed probably better than Russia weed. Our weed's better than Russia weed because Russia, Russia weed, man, you think about it. The laboratory Russia was making this weed and the power cuts off all the time on that liquid yeah. hash. It's like <laughs> underground. It's in there. It's where they had it's where they had the winter soldier. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that weed was made in Chernobyl. You don't yeah, know Chernobyl weed. See. <laughs> I'm not too sure if this weed is going to... Sometimes it causes side effects. One guy got a cough. Uh, another guy got nosebleed. Six people turned into fire. <laughs> so just being very cautious with this. But, you know, yeah. it's, all, it's okay. It's good I'm price. It's 7 saying, billion you're a rubles. Celebrity, man. If you're a celebrity, get your, get your drugs and get your fix in the city. Don't yeah. bring your fix to the city. Yeah. You, you crap in the bed like Amber Heard, dog. Bro. You know? Like this... Bro, this Amber, bad Heard, Amber Heard would do a cocaine on the stand. Like, Listen. she was in the city. She got her stuff from the city. Johnny Depp's like... Ugh, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best. That's the best trial that I... I it's I'll be OJ. Like, yeah, that's it's OJ. Best trial since OJ. It's the best trial since OJ. It's the gonna... best trial since OJ. Like, legit since OJ. <laughs> Like, I'm just really? clapping every now and then, like, yes. <laughs> Yo, it's the best trial. Buddy was like, hey, you didn't want her to act. He's like, I got her Aquaman. Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about, dog? Like, I got her Aquaman. What are you talking about? Like, it's, she, There was one where they were talking about, they were like, uh, and so uh, was Mr. Depp trying to urinate in the foyer? And the guy was like, he's like Scottish. And he's like, 
I don't believe Mr. Depp was trying to urinate in the fire. And they were like, well, he goes, I believe I would have remembered if I seen Mr. Depp's penis. <laughs> <laughs> Only in Hollywood, bro. Yeah, man. Only it's the best, in- man. I don't think I've ever been that mad at somewhere when I'm like, you know what? I'm going to drop a deuce in this guy. <laughs> Like first of all, driving the driving the deuce for me is 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 sensual. Like I'm 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 chilling. I got the lights yeah. in the bathroom off. I got my phone. I'm comfortable. Like yeah. I'm in there chilling. You got to be hovered in the bed. <laughs> Squat, you got to be hovered, bro. Like you got to have strong. You got to have knees like Megan. <laughs> hovered over, and be like yo, you know me out. Like hey, I and the thing is, I never know what kind of deuce is coming out of me. Until it's coming out. Yeah, so I don't know how, I don't know if this is three solid drops, one big old long turd, a spray show. Like, I don't know what's about to happen. So it's like, I'm really taking a risk here. It's going to be all over my legs, you know, just to teach Johnny Depp a lesson. <laughs> a lesson. Yo, just to teach him like, You know, Johnny like, Depp just walking in the room, looking at the turd. He's like, this again, this again. <laughs> you, you know the hatred you got to have for somebody to do that. Like, and you know what? Just, the, and yeah, and you know, on, on, on also too, bro. She nasty because you know she just pulled the pants up, walked away. Ain't white, oh, no you don't got no toilet nothing. paper, no nothing. You don't walk to the bidet. And you know the funny thing is why they're hearing all this because this is the worst part. When you've been in like a toxic relationship and stuff, while you hear all this, you start getting all fuming. Like he's on the stand remembering stuff, but then also he's like, I can't believe she dropped the deuce. I remember she dropped the deuce <laughs> on the bed. He's like. Yeah. I also remember how weird we got when we made up that weekend afterwards, and now that we knew Dookie was in the game. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he like, I, I, I just bought this this for Mattress Firm. Yeah. I'm the, only one. <laughs> the dudes was freaking out because I walked in there. I thought they was freaking out because I was Johnny Depp. They was freaking out because they didn't have no mattresses. <laughs> Yo, somebody here for a mattress. What? What? Hey, here, give him some that, cash. Send him away. Hey, give him some cash. <laughs> hey, you that pirate dude? <laughs> yeah. You walk in the mattress for, as we've said before, guys, mattress firm, we don't understand what they do because nobody's ever bought a mattress from there. But if you walk in the mattress firm to try to buy a mattress, they get shocked. Some dude walks up, hands you some cash. He's like, hey, man, just get out of here. Just go. Just go. <laughs> hey, just here's go. my address. Just go get the mattress from my house. Yeah, <laughs> I don't need a problem. Go get, I got this mattress. got a dookie on it. Johnny Depp brought it in here. I can't do that with it. <laughs> I got that's Johnny it. Depp's Dookie matches for sale. <laughs> and you know this too. You know Johnny Depp. Hey, here's the deal. You know this. You know if your girl walks and takes a Dookie on your mattress, you don't say, God damn it, and start cleaning it up. You go to one of your other rooms to sleep because you're not cleaning this up. So it was like two days up. until a maid showed up and she was like, God damn it, Mr. <laughs> Depp. He's like, you talk to Amber. You talk to Amber. I ain't taking no Dookie on the mattress. I was peeing oh, in the foyer. Man. Hey, I'm telling you, man, when it's just me and Miguel, bro, it, it's out of control. We The teachers are off. They're gone. No parents, baby. We got to go, man. Hey, where you at this weekend, bro? I'm in Deland over at the, or is it, uh, yeah, the Deltona Bonkers Room over there. Okay. Uh, the community center. I'm there. Good room. Good yeah, room. it's a great room. Beautiful place. Uh, shows, uh, doors at seven, shows at eight. Yeah, yeah. Go see Miguel this, this weekend at, at Deltona. I am in Cocoa Beach at Gregory's this weekend. So you in Cocoa Beach. I am there Friday and Saturday. I will also be doing guest spots Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at Brick and Spoon. If you country, Spoon, uh, with Damian Williams. And I think Spunky is hosting. Um, tune in tomorrow. Um, it'll be just me and Miguel. Miguel will be in the big seat. Remember, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, iTunes, um, iHeartRadio, MySpace, Black Planet, um, Black People Meet, Mehente.com. Go follow us. I'm Ken Miller. That's Miguel Colon Jr. We are real ass. Thank you guys so, so much for tuning in. Uh, we'll see y'all tomorrow night. God bless you and good night.